Welcome to another Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV. This is Endless with VGMechanica.com. Tonight, I want to go over a couple things. Starting up here, I've had questions with what this stuff means up here. And I just can't remember if I've gone over it before, so I'll go over it again. So this first thing on the left here, where it's green, the color of this icon indicates is a quick indicator of signal strength. So green is good, yellow is slowing down, red is bad. Uh, S and R is sending um, your bandwidth, how much you're sending and how much you're receiving. When you go into busier areas, your receive will go up as it needs to give you more data. That's pretty straightforward. It's also a good way to tell if the server's going out on you, if your receive goes very low or receive zero. It typically means there may have been a crash. Uh, these two icons are the moons. They're not evident right now, but this is the phases of the moons. And you can, as a caster, they kind of enhance your abilities. I haven't really played a lot with it, so I don't know the math yet. This last one is the server time and date. Time in this game, it moves faster than the real world. As you can see, minutes are passing by as I say a few words. And the date in the server. So if you set a birthday, then when the date in the server comes along, uh, whatever will happen will happen that day. I still haven't figured that much out. Let's see. I've had a couple questions on the system I use. It's a laptop uh, by Asus, Gamer Republic of Gamers uh, VX60. It's a dual core, it's a Pentium Pro Duo, and it's got a NVIDIA 280, nothing too, complicated but more than enough for this game so right now i've been grinding up my thaumaturge i've been leveling it up getting it to about the same level as my gladiator and i've still got plenty to go so i'm going to keep doing that and i'm just going to show you some of the tricks first off once you start doing casters you get these cool little abilities let me pull up my actions Because mana does not replenish naturally, each caster class has its own ability. So Exaltation is the Thaumaturge ability, and Tranquility is the Conjurer ability. The reason I have them both equipped is whenever you add them from your actions to your action bar, they get a starting 10 minute timer. So to circumvent that, whenever I change classes, like if I switch between those two, if I just have them down here in the bar I rarely use, they don't get that timer. It's just a cool little trick I picked up from an article. Uh, but you can use it once every 10 minutes, and it just replenishes your mana. Uh, as another, alternatively, you can also go over to the camp, up to the crystal, and every 10 minutes or so, you can uh, go up to it, and it will replenish your health and mana as well. So we're out here, so got a little ways to go, and we're going to kill a uh, little punk hash hatchlings. Not those guys, those guys still kill me. Dodos aren't bad either. If I can keep that thing from aggroing me, they're awesome. So I've got this nuke spell called Slow. Ooh, running away almost. It slows down their man, uh, their stamina regeneration, which means they can attack less and use their abilities less often. I also have this cool ability called Punishing Barbs. Okay. So you see my guy do something cool there. So now whenever it hits me, it's going to take damage. And it's because my magic stats are so high, it actually is taking more damage than it's dealing me. I do keep my shield up. It's something I gotta remember to do. As it is nice to have your shield out. And again, whenever you see them charging an attack, try to get some distance between you. That's pretty universal with all creatures. Alright, it's hurting me pretty good 
here. Gonna heal up. So I do have a slew of spells and special abilities, but I'm preferring to use my primary attack from my scepter as it gets me more class experience. But if I get in trouble, I have a cool ability right now that's called Damnation. It actually is a TP ability instead of a magic ability. And it does this cool little graphic, which he evaded, but if it hits them, you gain mana back based on the amount of damage you do. So, pretty straightforward. I gained pretty good experience. Dodos are good for experience, but they're kind of few and far between lately. The uh, flavor text for Damnation is cool. It's haunt the enemy with visions of hells. Which I find amusing. So while as a caster I get a lot of abilities and spells that do big damage, your, pers your chance of gaining class experience is on a per hit basis, not on a amount of damage you do basis. So you increase your odds of getting experience by just doing your basic attacks. I also do uh, stat affecting things rather than damaging spells. Just so they can do less damage to me, but I can still sit there and hit them. Again, the shield levels up on its own, so I think I'm sitting on rank 7. Alright, so I'm gonna diverge a little bit. So I'm sharing the area with 129 people. Not so bad, it's a pretty big area, but most of them are gonna be around here anyway since it's the beginning section. Worth my time. Say so I'm looking for these puck hatchlings, but so are everybody else. I was having pretty good luck earlier where I'd be able to go from one to another without much, without running into other players, but that's always hit or miss. I've been getting some comments that there isn't a lot of differences between the areas, uh, that they start to look alike. And while there are a lot of similarities, keep in mind that I'm still in the beginning sections. I barely have a character above class, I barely have a class above level 10 and 11-ish. So I can't really go into the high areas without getting kind of ganked. That said, this world is a little smaller than other MMOs, and I don't know if it's to start with or... Uh, my going theory is, and this isn't really an excuse, just more of when you do these high-resolution games, it takes a whole lot more server to do a... Uh, they may have been wanting to go after that Dota. It takes a whole lot more server to, to do a world. While I do have stone skin and I like it, it has kind of a high cast time. And when you're just out grinding, waiting for it to cast on you is a good way to have someone else come and steal your mom out from under you. Oh, I've been put to sleep. Apparently I'm dodging unconsciously. All right, get a heal off. The dodo I'm a little more willing to use my spells on. Just because he can do a lot more damage.
Conjure has a very similar ability to my Punishing Barbs, which uh, he can actually cast on everyone. And so far on mine, it only affects me. Pretty cool. The Heal and Stone Skin are actually Conjurer spells. So I like, I really like leveling up both magic classes and combining the spells to optimal effect. Because the healing spell for the Thaumaturge is called Blood Rite. And it costs a little health before it heals you, but it's more of a regen that heals you over time. And I typically need to be healed now. So because they use the same stats as the Thaumaturge uh, spells, it's just uh, not a bad idea to mix and match. As you can see, I've got a little damage here. And I might have time to go over how to repair your own items. So slow decreases stamina uh, regeneration. But I've got another one that slows their movement speed down, which I think would be good in missions for, I don't know what that one was, which I think would be good in missions so that things don't keep running away. So grinding isn't the most terribly interesting part of the game, but like any MMO, it's a good way to gain levels. So I still got 4,000 experience to go. Physical level will go up regardless. I'm not as worried about it. I'm already actually pretty high on a level 17. For people who are worried about their physical level, I recommend crafting as a way to bump it up, because you seem to gain a lot more physical experience per hour crafting than you do beating things up. That said, you find a lot more use for, well, that said, if, you're phys if your combat class level isn't very high, it's not gonna be able to utilize as much of that physical level. So when you cast a spell, and I'm going to cast one on myself, this area of effect comes up, and I've gone over it before, but it's a pretty cool way to heal yourself, in this case, and anyone in the area, but it does do less, uh, it is less effective that way, because it is dispersed. Stone skin lasts less time, things like that. But I can even do slow as an area effect, which is kind of cool. So when we run into groups of mobs on those missions that kind of like to kill us, I can throw a slow on all of them and they'll have, they'll be using less of their abilities since one appears to be running after somebody. I am finding a lot of dodos today. It's a very good thing. As you notice, I don't really use up a lot of mana doing this, doing it this way. 
when you're in a group and you're putting out a lot of DPS through your spells, you're going to use a lot more mana. But, like I said, I am leveling up, so I'm not using all my spells to maximum effect. Simply because I want to get as many hits out there. And I actually don't mind getting hit, because the more I get hit in the shield, the higher my shield, my sentinel levels go up. that do have special attacks, you'll notice that they start using them when you get their health low, to the point where some of them will exclusively use them. The Puck Hatchlings have this backflip thing, which is actually really powerful. You get plenty of time to get out of its way, though, but they'll just keep using it over and over unless you put slow on them, after you get below a certain health. Myself to go after this other guy. Ooh, he's red. I'm not so worried because he's a dodo, <laughs> and I have killed so many of these guys at this point. The uh, color indicator, as I stated before, is based off your class level. Uh, because I am a physical level, let's start getting other stuff on. Because I am a physical level 17, I am. I do have a better chance of dealing with it. That is something I like when you do find an area of different of the same mob. They will have varying levels amongst them. Funny thing is, is I kind of think I'm more effective as a thaumaturge than I was as a solo gladiator. And that could just be my own personal skill. Just having better luck with the caster, or the, maybe it's just the ranged attacks. So you see my mana's getting a little low. So we're going to pop off my exaltation. Just pretty easy. Boom, mana up, 10 minute counter. Just that simple. I'm gonna put stone skin up since these guys are kind of hitting hard. So 
Don't, don't just look at the experience you get at the end. As you go through, certain hits give you more skill points. So it's kind of a cumulative effect. So you're leveling that up faster than you think. That said, it's still kind of a slow grind to this high up. I, I'm averaging maybe an hour a level. I am grinding out by Limza just because I found a cool guide off of uh, Alakazam for grinding up to about level 18. I, I like the creatures in this game in terms of grinding them. Because even when they take a while, you're used. To, I'm used to thinking in other games that the longer they take to kill, the more time you're wasting. But the more times you hit them, the higher your odds of getting skill points. So these long kills aren't actually a bad thing like they would be in other games. For people who are who are uh, calculating experience per hour. So you've already gained an extra thousand. And stone skin are also good spells to use if you're going to be leveling up physical classes just because they give you a good recourse. The only drawback is that you need to allocate points into intelligence and mind in order to use them effectively. As you use equipment or get beat up, uh, equipment durability goes down. But if you even put a few, like, just basic levels into crafting, then you can repair that item. I went and I repaired a level 10 item with a crafting skill I had maybe two levels in, and I had no problems whatsoever. just found, like, the nest of dodos. And I have nobody here to compete with them with, so I am so taking advantage of this while I can. I have noticed that every creature has some kind of ranged attack. My first thought is maybe that's just to stop people from trying to exploit and uh, getting them stuck in the rocks and then just killing kill them from afar. Thank you. 
Kind of like the other Dodos are like, what's up? I see you're beating up her brother. What's up? They're not even aggroing me. It's almost like they're presenting themselves to me. Like a me next type thing. It's like the best luck I've ever had with finding groups of mobs. Good to remember. I'll put this up on the map so you guys can see it after I finish this fight. It's good to try to remember where you find good areas. Like, I found these guys here. I also know there are. A lot of the puck hatchlings in this area and also up here, which are good for level 10 plus leveling. It's good to remember where they're at because you're going to be a low level again, unless you are completely dedicated to one class, which is kind of a mistake in this game. Then you're going to come back and you're going to need to grind from the scratch again. Uh, the good news is once you've done it once and gotten kind of high, your physical level really gives you an edge in all the beginning areas. Show that again. Let's get stone skin up. Stone skin only lasts like one or two hits for me, but better than nothing. So I'm gonna slow it and just start hitting it. I do have one gladiator ability equipped. Rampart, just because it's an easy way and quick to increase your physical and magical defense. If you're getting pummeled a little more than you like, you can throw it up as you're healing yourself. It goes up quick. It just has a high countdown timer for refreshing. And it's free. It doesn't cost TP or MP. I'm getting the impression from comments that a lot of the people watching these videos are people who have computers that can't quite do it and are waiting to get it on the PS3. I like to think that they're going to have a lot of the little bugs fixed by March, which I think is the PS3 release date. So you guys are probably going to have a better starting experience than a lot of us. I've already got talked to some people who kind of feel like they're still in a beta. I'm enjoying it. I think it's enjoyable enough. Also knowing that there are patches in the future, it's part of the the month to month benefit of knowing that a game improves as you go on. I don't really agree so much with the people who say there's absolutely nothing to do because First of all, there's crafting, and crafting in and of itself is actually pretty involved and kind of fun. Um, second of all, there's the storyline quests, which it doesn't really take much to get to the levels up to be able to keep doing those, and those are those alone are going to keep you busier than most single-player games do. Jeez, 400 points right there. I love that. Better than a mission. And 10 minutes passes fast. I mean, that thing's already refreshed. I don't really need to use it, but... And then just don't forget to go back to your active bar. Uh, this bar just has my, um, I think my mining stuff. Yeah. Because I, I like to mine sometimes.
I am having a problem lately that my inventory fills up so fast while I'm grinding that really the only way for me to clear it is to go sell things to the vendors for like an nth of what I could possibly get for them for other, from other players. I just don't have the option to sell it to other players out here and don't really want to run back to a bazaar. And my bazaar is full <laughs> on my uh, retainer. When they put you to sleep, you have to wait for somebody to do something to you, whether heal you or hurt you. Just jostle you. But apparently you can still dodge while asleep, which is awesome, actually. I always keep forgetting to put my, my shield out. It's a lot to keep track of. I actually have both hands on the keyboard with this character. Okay. Let's see something real quick. I'll show you some controls. something I need to play with in a later video. Me and my, uh, me and James and them need to coordinate on getting our battle regiments set up so that we can show you how they work, but my understanding is kind of think Chrono Trigger, where two or more players can use their abilities at the same time for kind of a combined attack. These are just the different cycling buttons. So, through learning, or through rather through reading, I've learned that for the keyboard and mouse player, there isn't an auto follow button or shortcut available. It's really a controller only thing. That said, it's a simple macro to enable it. Um, I do recommend you read through a guide on macros as they're really helpful in this game. I don't have many set up myself, but I change them when necessary. He got slow on me, which means my stamina regenerates slowly, but as I'm a magic class, it's not as big a deal for me. Oh, that's stone skin, I meant to heal myself.
So you'll see on my screen as an office keyboard user, sometimes when I'm between casting spells, it has one randomly selected. And I know that's There we go. That is because the arrow keys are used to select a spell, and it will kind of keep the selection on the last spell I use. Kind of. Not always. But as I don't use the arrows and enter and stuff, it's not exactly a spell that I use. When I'm talking and playing, I kind of pay attention to my health more than I actually pay attention to my attacks. Just so I don't accidentally die while I'm talking. So I'm not- if it does- if it looks like I'm not doing, like, optimal damage or just kind of sitting there doing nothing, that's kind of why. I know my limitations in terms of paying attention to too many things at once and just don't get killed. Five more of those guys. Man, I can't believe no other players has come. Have come. I'm in Dodo Heaven. Earlier, when I was grinding some puck hatchlings, going from one to the other, kind of slow because they're a little high for me, a lancer who was like five or six class levels higher came through and just killed all of them around. He had to have gotten a pittance of experience. So I don't know if he was griefing or if he thought that was actually a good way for him to level up or what. But it just kind of messed me up because I had to kind of find another spot to grind. that sometimes after you finish casting a spell, the spell casting animation stays on your weapon for a while. I find it kind of... Oh, I'm going to sleep. I find it amusing. He put me to sleep again. Oh no, it slowed me while I was asleep. Okay.
bumble beetles are kind of a low level. I think I killed them all. So there's more hiding around the corner up here. They do sometimes seem to time their belches right when you're at a point where you can't move very well because you're healing yourself or something. I don't know if that's the AI or if I'm unlucky. So that killed that one got me a lot of shield experience but didn't get me any thaumaturge experience and that happens just one of those things After this battle, I'll go over the spells I have, and then we'll probably call the video done.
I was asked which class was the better healer. And that's a hard question. Um, both classes get spells that benefit the party and in different ways, but the Conjurer is the more old school what you think of of a direct healer. With a specific heal spell and a spell that increases your armor, the stone skin. Whereas the Thaumaturge is a little more subtle, regen instead of heal. Um, but again, that's thinking in terms of only being one class. And this is a game where you can mix and match class abilities. Both classes get Resurrect slash Revive at about level 34-ish. there. It's a lottery. I was doing really well for a while there. That was cool. So let's go over my spells. They're the same wave as equipping any other action. I know I've gone over the Conjurer. And they all have costs. Let's see. Oh, Blood Rite. I, I got the names mixed up. Blood Rite actually... Increases your magic power, so you do more magic damage. Sacrifice is the one where you spend a little hit points, and then also some magic, and then you and all your party, if you have it in an area effect, will get a regen effect. I've also got poison, which is what it says, does damage over time. Uh, and you can do that in an area. Scourge and Banish are the starting spells. They do... Umbral and Astral. The Umbral and Astral, I believe, correspond to the moons, Astral and Umbral, and have more direct correlation and power based on which moon is out. I haven't seen any stats on that yet, so I'm just guessing. That's kind of what Skarasoft likes to do, is have the moon affect stuff. So gravity is the one that slows down the speed of the enemy, so if I wanted to, I could slow them, move back, hit them, move back, hit them, move back, hit them. Or if we uh, all are ranged units, I could slow them down. Um, cool thing about Scourge and Banish is they also reduce their resistances to that damage type. So if I did Scourge and then Damnation, Damnation would be uh, more powerful. And, uh, that's pretty it with them. And I haven't gotten Conjurer up above 6 because I just wanted heal. But when you get level 1 Conjurer, you get one spell from each element, so you can kind of choose right off the bat which element you want to focus on. And then as you go, you get more abilities. Transchat is their own version of Blood Rite, which instead of making the attack more powerful, it makes it to where your attack can't be interrupted. In this case, when you get attacked while preparing a spell, it slows down the spell, so you could get your heals off faster while you're being attacked with the Transchat. Chat. Trance chant. That is about it. Casting is just like any other uh, class that does combat. Um, I for grinding or also just crafting. If you're grinding your craft, uh, watch. I got all this stuff, but there's nothing telling you your inventory is full, so you kind of have to check it periodically. Oh, I didn't max it out. Cool. I actually did a good job of selling the stuff last time. I keep having it max out and then it doesn't tell me. So I don't know what I do and don't get. Sorry. Um, so yeah, while you're grinding or you're grinding crafting, I recommend putting a show on in the background or something. Uh, as it does get a little redundant, uh, as you just saw. It's kind of the same thing over and over. You do have a goal which makes it a little more worthwhile. There's the city. Does get a little bit redundant, so you do want something to break out the monotony. Uh, this isn't the core of the game, it's something that's optional. You can level up just by doing quests. That said, you don't get many quests a day. So if you're a very casual player, that's you know that's gonna keep you nice and busy. But if you're someone that every once in a while, like it's been my day off, I've had more time to play today and you want more to do, this is a perfectly good thing to do. This or grinding your craft to get your craft skills up. 
just because they have a net benefit of either this one I can go out into more places and explore, or with crafting you can end up making more money. Crafting makes mad money right now. He will aggro. Something I've experimented with, things that aggro are more likely to aggro if you click on them. Um, again, this could just be my in my head, but it is something I've noticed, so things that you think are too big for you, don't click on them just because you want, because they may come after you. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.